Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 4 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll be talking about events at the application level in an ASP.NET web application. In an ASP.NET web application, events can occur at three levels. At the application level, examples include application start, application end, session start, session end, etc. And at the page level, examples include page load, page pre-render, page unload. And at the control level, examples include the click event of a button control, selected index changed event of a drop-down list, etc. We will be talking about page level and control level events in a great detail in a later video session. In this session, we'll be concentrating upon application level events. In part two of this, in part three of this video series, we have spoken about view state variables, and we have understood that view state variables are used as a mechanism to preserve data across page post pack. But by default, a view state of one web form is not available in another web form. For example, if I create a view state variable on web form one, I can only access that view state variable on that web form one. If I try to access that on web form two, you know, that basically will be null. But however, if there are situations where I want to move data from one web form to another, so what are the different techniques that are available in ASP.NET? These, these four are the techniques. Okay, to send data from one web form to another, we can make use of query strings, cookies, session state, and application state. We will be talking about query strings and cookies in a later session. In this session, we'll concentrate upon session state and application state variables. Now, session state variables are available across all pages, but only for a given single session. You can think of session state variables, you know, as like single user global data. For a given user, across all the web pages, you can access session state variables. Only the current session has access to its session state. Whereas application state variables are available across all pages and across all sessions. You can think of application state variables as multi-user global data all sessions can read and write application state variables. So in short, session state variables are like single user global data and application state variables are like multi-user global data. In an ASP.NET web application, global.asax file contains the application level events. Here, the picture shows a snapshot of the global.asax file. And if you look at this, we have application underscore start event. So when does this event get fired? This event gets fired if your application is not already running. And when the first request for a web form in the application, you know, reaches IIS, the web server, you know, it loads the application's assembly into the memory. That's when the application starts up and this event gets fired. Application end event, when will this be fired? Whenever there are no more active sessions. If the last session has already expired, then the application end events fires. Application underscore error event, when does this get fired? Whenever there is an unhandled exception. Okay, if there is an unhandled exception, application underscore error event gets fired. In fact, in real time, we actually use application underscore error to handle unhandled exceptions and log them to a database or to an event viewer. In fact, we'll be looking at an example of that in a later video session when we talk about exception handling in ASP.NET. Session state, when does session start when does this event get fired whenever a new user you know visits your application whenever a new session gets started now what is a session we'll talk about that in a bit a session can be treated or considered as a unique instance of a browser with a unique session id we'll be talking about that in a bit so whenever a user a new user connects to your application session underscore start event gets fired when does a session underscore end event fire? Whenever the session of an existing user, you know, times out, that's when session underscore end event fires. 
Now session timeout can be configured in web.config file using a timeout attribute. Now if you look at these events, these can be classified as application events and session events. Examples of application events, application start, application end, application error, examples of session events, session start and session event. In general, application events are used to initialize data that needs to be available to all the current sessions of the application, whereas session events are used to initialize data that needs to be available only for a given individual session, but not between multiple sessions. Let's look at an example. Now, if you look at this, this is a pretty simple example that we have. In the application underscore start event of global.asax, what we are doing here, we're actually creating two application state variables. Total applications, total user sessions, you know, these are application level variables, application state variables, okay? And we are initializing them to zero. Now remember, application state variable can be accessed by all sessions, okay? Now what we are doing here is, in the application start event, total applications, basically I want to say how many times an application starts up and whenever new users connects to the application, we basically want to figure out how many users are connected to your application at, at the moment. We want to find out number of users online with the application. How many active sessions do we have to our application? Okay, so if we want to find out the total, you know, number of applications running, you know, how many instances of this application running, since application start will be fired only once, you know, when this application start event is fired, we're incrementing the value of total applications by one in that event. And in the session start event, we are incrementing the total user sessions by one because every time you know, a session, a new session is established, increment total user sessions by one. That will tell us how many users are currently online. And whenever the session ends, now how do you determine a session has ended? That's determined by the session timeout attribute in web.config file. And the default is 20 minutes. So whenever a an existing session expires, decrement the total user sessions value by one. Okay, this is this piece of code goes in global.asax. And in web form one, what are we doing? We are simply retrieving, you know, the, uh, the data from application state variables and printing it out. So number of applications, you know, to print that, we are using the total applications count and number of users online, we are using total user sessions application state variable. Okay, let's look at this in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So if you look at the global.asx file, we exactly have the same code that we have seen on the slide. And on the webform1.aspx, I have the same code as well. So now, let me run this one. Let me press Control F5. So we are running this for the first time. So it should show the number of applications as one and number of users online as one. Now, if you look at this, you know, you can consider this as a session. Now, this browser instance will have a unique session ID that gets sent to the web server. And based on that session ID, the web server knows, okay, this is one user. Now, if I copy this URL and open another browser instance, so I'm opening another browser instance. Okay, there is some issue with Google Chrome. Let me re relaunch that. Okay, so number of applications is one, number of users online is one. Let's open another instance of Google Chrome and look at this. When I paste this URL and I press enter, it shows number of applications one and number of users online as one. Now, let's first understand what we mean by a session, a user session. Now, a user session can be treated as a unique instance of a browser. Now, if you look at this, this is one instance of the browser and this is another instance of the browser. So I basically have two instances of the browsers, okay? But then I didn't end up getting two sessions. That's because by default, sessions use cookies. 
So as long as I have this browser window open, this is the first browser window and this is the second browser window. So when I first established a session with the web server, I get a session ID and that same session ID is used by this browser as well because the session cookie that is stored on this computer is being shared by both of these windows. But on the other hand, if I close the browser window, let's close both of them and open this browser window. I'm opening the browser window, Google Chrome browser window. Now, since I close the existing, you know, browser windows, the session cookie would have been deleted now and that session ID is gone. Now, when I open a new browser window and when I try to navigate to that page, I get a new session ID. So the web server now treats this new session ID as if it's coming from a new user. So now when I press enter, look at that, number of users online is two. Now the session ID is still there in the session cookie and that session cookie is alive. If I open another Google Chrome window, what's going to happen? This instance of the Google Chrome window is going to make use of that session ID. So when I navigate to this web form, web server, you know, web server receives the same session ID so it thinks the request is coming from the same user and that's why number of users online is two. But on the other hand, another way to actually get a different session ID is to use a different browser. Now I can make use of Internet Explorer. So Internet Explorer does not make use of the same cookie that Google Chrome is using. So because of which this will have its own session ID and when I paste you know the URL you can see that number of users now is actually three in Internet Explorer window. So basically you can close the browser window or you can open a new browser window you know a different type of browser window you know if you are using Google Chrome and if you try to access the same application using Internet Explorer you end up getting a different session ID and then number of users will be incremented why because this session start event will be fired whenever a new session ID is received by the web server it knows that this is it I mean it thinks that it's a new user and starts the session Okay. All right. So what is a session? We have al already spoken about it. A session is a unique instance of the browser. A single user can have multiple sessions by visiting your application with multiple instances of the browser running with a different session ID on his machine. And how do we simulate, you know, as if we are having a different session ID, you can close the browser window, which will cook close the existing browser window and open a new instance of the browser. So when you close the existing browser window, the session ID that is associated with that browser using a session cookie is gone and a new browser and in new instance of the browser will get a new session ID because of which, you know, the web server treats that request from that browser as a new user and session underscore start event will be fired and number of users online will be incremented by one. Another way is to open a new instance of a different browser. For example, I was using Google Chrome first, but when I used Internet Explorer, you know, we get a new session ID because of which session underscore start event gets fired and the value gets incremented. Okay, and the third way is to basically use cookie-less sessions. Now we understood that by default, ASP.NET uses cookies to maintain these session IDs. Okay, but you can tell your application not to use cookies. Okay, and how do we do that? Using the web.config file, the web configuration file. In the web configuration file, in session state element, you specify cookie-less is equal to true. You're saying let's use cookie-less sessions by turning this attribute on. So let's turn that on and to turn that on all you do is go to web.config file and set this cookie less is equal to true. And the moment we do that and then we run this application look at what's going to happen. So let's close all these windows at the moment. Let's run it once again. Look at this. If you look at the URL now I get a unique you know, alphanumeric number here, that's nothing but the session ID. Okay, now if I copy this, 
look at this if I copy this and then open another instance of Google Chrome okay, there's some issue with Google Chrome let's open it again so I paste that there so number of users online is 2 and then I open another one look at this I'm pasting the exact same thing and if you look at the session ID I just copy that session ID as well so when I press enter what's gonna happen the same session ID goes to the web server so the web server thinks it's coming from the same user so that's why it will not fire session underscore start event in global.asx file because of which you know the session the application level variable application of total user sessions will not be incremented so it's still two but on the other hand you know if you look at the URL we don't have to have this session ID you can get rid of that session ID so if you look at this I want to go to localhost at this port number you know I want to retrieve this web form one so now let's copy that let's open another Google Chrome vendor and look at what's gonna happen now if you look at this in these two browser vendors it's the same session ID now here when I try to visit that look at what's gonna happen when I press enter I get a different session ID so as I have a different session ID and this is the session ID used by this browser to communicate with the web server the web server thinks this is a different user and then fires session underscore start event which will then obviously increment the value of total user sessions in this event we are incrementing it by one that's why it gets incremented by one to three so basically you know there are three ways to get a new session ID and force the session underscore start event to execute one is close the existing browser window and open and then open a new instance of the browser or open a new instance of a different browser or use cookie-less sessions on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day